sharp cut of the knife penetrates the thick outer layer until bitter juices flow out. More often than not, a lemon is used for only one purpose and the useful lemon carcass is thrown out without any hesitations. Does this sound familiar? It is so important to be productive and cost effective when buying food and how we dispose of it. Several fruit and vegetable scraps can be given a new purpose even after they've been used for their intended fate. For example, an unwanted hollowed out lemon can be turned into a homemade candle. And potato peels, avocado and banana skins and onions can be thrown into a compost. In my opinion, the world was created for one sole purpose, to provide, to provide a home for all life on earth, and us as humans are taking it for granted. One of the most important issues facing our world today is climate change and the greenhouse gas emissions which are causing it. Some people don't even think that it exists. Well, believe me, it does, and it has already greatly affected our oceans, increased heat waves, and is melting ice glaciers. In my opinion, the lack of awareness isn't actually the problem. If you go out onto the street and ask any random person, do you know what climate change is? It's sad to say that chances are they most likely will know what it is and would know what to do to help prevent it from getting worse. But it's the fact that not enough people are even trying to help stop it. I can certainly turn off outlets when they're not being used, recycle more, drive less and conserve water. Don't you think you can too? It's a small price to pay to ultimately save each other from ourselves. I've never fully grasped the reason why I care so much about the environment, but I do know that whenever I hear someone say another oil spill has been unleashed into the ocean, all I can picture are helpless dolphins and sea lions coughing and spluttering disgusting black filth that was so ignorantly capped into the ocean, and I feel for them. My heart breaks a little bit more every time. So then why do I still have faith? Why do I think that I can make a difference? I'll tell you. There's a little boy in Orange County, California, whose name is Ryan Hickman. He has his very own recycling company. And, and today, at the age of just seven years old, he has already recycled 200,000 bottles. 99% of Norway's domestic energy is sustainably sourced through hydropower from its coastlines. Leonardo DiCaprio raised $40 million for environmental causes. A Mexican company called Biofast actually figured out a way to make single-use cutlery made completely out of recycled avocado seeds. The Saltwater Brewery invented edible six-pack rings that can be used instead of the incredibly toxic and harmful plastic ones that are invading the only home our marine life has ever known. In 2015, volunteers managed to pick up 5.3 million kilograms of rubbish off of a sober beach in Mumbai. In his final year in office, President Barack Obama managed to conserve more water and more land than any other president in American history. And just, and just two weeks after this, he managed to create the first marine protected area along the coast of the Atlantic and the US. Colombia, Ecuador, Costa Rica all agreed to help protect some of the world's most biodiverse waters. If this isn't selflessness, then I don't know what is. Entire countries are already working together to save the planet for the sake of you and hundreds of generations to come. That's why I still believe that we can save the planet. Why I can save the planet. I attended a, a holiday program called A Marine Biologist for a Day. It was incredibly transformative and the affable mentors taught me so much about extraordinary marine life. And more importantly, that becoming a marine biologist is what I want to be when I grow up. I've been wanting to be one since I was 10 years old, but recently I had been debating whether or not this is really the career path for me. But in the six powerful hours that I was there, I had never been more sure of anything in my life. Nothing makes me happier than saving the habitats of innocent wildlife. We talked about coral bleaching and passed around the jaw structure of a shark. We got to touch sea urchins and sea stars and met an adorable little turtle named Chip. We even talked about how sea cucumbers and sea apples have defence mechanisms when they're scared. And smaller breeds of shark, such as a bamboo shark, don't actually give birth, they lay eggs. But the best part, beyond a shadow of a doubt, was that there was 10 other kids there, my age, at 7 o'clock on a Saturday morning during the school holidays, wanting to learn about marine life. What warmed my heart even more was that there was a 12-year-old girl there who was that infatuated by the sea that she had been flown in there for a birthday from Sydney for six hours and was flown back that night. This was the most adorable thing, and all I could say to her was, you and me, we're going to save the planet. 
While I was there, I found out that sharks have a jelly-like substance in their noses, which are incredibly sensitive, which is why lots of people punch sharks in the face if one's attacking them. And sea stars? They're actually called sea stars, not starfish, because they're not fish, they're anchinoderms, which means that they have a water vascular system and they don't bleed. And sea urchins move along the sea floor with their tubed feet. And if you touch one, its two feet come closer to your finger to protect its body from being damaged. It was the coolest thing. And when sea stars eat, they spit their stomachs completely out of their bodies and hover over their prey and use their two feet to push the food to their mouths. Who wouldn't want to save these absolutely captivating creatures? I am so jealous of the people who get paid to study these, spine, these spellbinding creatures all day long for a job. Before the day even started, we were asked why we were there, and almost everyone said the same thing. I want to be a marine biologist and I want to stop climate change. Just like me. There are hundreds of alternative uses for fruit and vegetable scraps and composting is a great example. The ocean is where fascinating species of marine life have lived for millions of years and can easily be saved if we all start now. There are mind-blowing people who have already achieved so much. It is already proven to be a challenging task, but I know I sure as heck can't stop trying now. Entire countries are already making the change, so why can't you? In the words of Nelson Mandela, it always seems impossible until it's done. Thank you.